Welcome back. We're the Bourbon Gym. He's Dan and I'm Sean. I don't know what we're drinking, I'm but he's adding that. water. I'm gonna try that. We're drinking actually very Today, we're gonna things. talk about a couple up and coming whiskey brands or labels or whatever you wanna put on it uh, that we think you guys should be looking at in 2024. Yeah, I did, did this, and it went that way. Today's episode, real quick, sponsored, Patrick Knight. Oh, Patrick Knight putting a bottle out of Architect, like to too. On there, Field too. number three. A little oldie, but I'm going to take it right to the dome. Thank you, Patrick, for supporting what, the channel. I wonder, yeah, thank you, buddy, for real. Thank you for the love. I do wonder what, uh, I, I started seeing these around town. I wonder what build they're on now. 18. Maybe. I know I've seen a seven. I think we have this. I think I bought us a seven. Okay, I know we have a seven, so I would assume they're at least on nine. Yeah, that is a toast. That one's gra- that one's aggressive. Yeah. That when you hear the word intense, that's what you would think. It of. is intense. So speaking of brands that we actually love, like you know what, you want to be a good segue into that one. Do I got it? Yeah, you got it. So listen, sometimes when you walk into a store, you see a bunch of brands, you don't know who they are, what they're yeah. about, what they make, who, what they don't make, what they source, where it comes from. Confusion. We're here to explain to you some brands that we've fallen in love with, or often when we see them in stores, we're like, if that's a new release, I'll try it because I like the name behind yeah. it. Listen, the here's how it works. Yeah. Some of these brands you'll have already heard of, some mm-hmm. you won't. Simple as that. That's all you got to say? It's the best intro of all time. That, that's all you got to say. Um, this is just stuff that we are looking forward to in 2024, honestly. Mm-hmm. What, what are you leading us off with there? First hey. and foremost, listen. This, this one's a little different. Things Sean and I were skeptical of could be this list oh, right here. That one would definitely fit the mold. That would have made the that skeptical list. That is the mold. JT Malik out of Louisiana. Rice whiskey. Yeah, made it. They make that. It's yeah. not, clearly not a source thing. It's their rice, their yeah. whiskey. And it's that color, which is the wildest part yeah. about it, truly. This one is a pick. This is a Justin's House of Bourbon pick. <sighs> that, that. Actually, sorry, it's a bourbon outfitter single barrel. Uh, single barrel cast strength. It is all rice. Just all rice. Rice, rice, baby. Handcrafted rice whiskey is what it says. These taste like bourbon. Yeah. They look like bourbon. They smell like bourbon. We've been confused on a couple different things, like through the time, like uh, Michter's rye. Mm, yeah. Every time it's a low rye. It's tricky, you know. We're always like, oh, that's bourbon when we have a blind. It, 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 no, it's just not. It's rye. Yeah. We drink this, we go, I'm looking at the bottle, still think it's a bourbon. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, that, um, like I said, I was skeptical. I think I would imagine a lot of people are skeptical hearing rice whiskey. My brain goes to sake. Yeah. Like it doesn't go somewhere else. The only thing that I think we've had was Little Book Chapter 3. I do believe. Brown rice. Had brown rice in it and it was not. Yeah. Don't confuse the two. This is fantastic. That's very good. Yeah. Um, And these were not super unreasonably priced by any means. So um, for a cast strength, rice whiskey that tastes like bourbon and damn good bourbon at that mm-hmm. this is a brand um that like possibly we would do a pick with the 2024 type thing we hope so all right another one that's a little bit different westward listen um so american single malts apparently are supposed to be the next big thing coming in bourbon people they do it well. <laughs> it's so coming in bourbon coming in bourbon is accurate yeah. but it's like yeah Bourbon Y'all drinkers. Y'all know what I mean. Coming is, in whiskey. It's like the up and coming thing in yeah. whiskey. Bourbon drinkers, in theory, would be paying attention. You get burnt out. Some of them are good. Yeah. Some are not, by the way. But Westward mm. does a good job. Yeah. We've um, always called this the geometry yeah. bottle. If you see a geometry it's got bottle. Beautiful shape to it. It's a safe bet. Yeah. Westward makes truly some of the best single malts out of the whole country I've ever had. Yeah. Like it pretty easily with that. Like we've had a couple. Saying. I'm not saying that we've had all of them we from haven't. everyone, but this is one that we've sat down and we're pleasantly surprised. We've with. had enough to know that's a good one. Yes. Um, the bottle's gorgeous, priced pretty reasonably, mm-hmm. and they're making it. Strand Hands is obviously, I would assume, in the country the biggest yes. American single, single malt, malt maker. I'm- um, or on one, one of them, but this is absolutely fantastic whiskey. If you want to venture out and just try some different stuff, they have a club, which I'm not a part of, but they have a club where you can get like special releases from them and stuff. It's kind of a cool idea. Um, but I don't, you know, I just, I'd try one of these out. This is an exclusive release. It was finished in a, finished in a Belgian Ardennes Trappist Ale, and it's fantastic. And I'm not a beer finished guy at all, at all. What'd you give me? I don't know. All right, next on the list, we got Georgia Hartwood. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably know this brand. Maybe if you don't. You might. Yeah. It's worth checking out if you don't know. 
Um, we've had a few different just pick bottles now. Yeah. They've been really good. We've had um, one of them was phenomenal. One of them was at, I think it was Will and Grease's event. I think it was a podcast event that was, they did a, they did like a deconstruction thing. Yes. CJ and Nick and all of our buddies, they were like, yep. it was absolutely phenomenal. So a lot of these very, again, reasonably priced whiskey, again, in smaller brand that's kind of been like probably, I guess, exploded over the last year or two. Yeah. I think they're doing really cool stuff. They're doing finishing and different stuff. Um, it's good whiskey. It's good whiskey. I think they're doing a great job. We, like Dan said, we've had several different bottles now. Yeah. I know there's several here. Um, I was generally surprised when uh -huh. we have them blind. They always yes. do very well for us. Yeah. We don't ever think of Georgia. Um, no. When, when we're trying to name a state. As now it. 13th County and then. It's true. That's Except wild. Marcus. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, this this great stuff. You see, uh, especially like the single barrel stuff. Check them on out. Yeah. It's worth it. They've won some medals and stuff. Also it's very reasonably priced. Yeah. Which that. is a, it's a big one for us. I mean, especially when you're trying out a new brand. I don't want to spend over $100 to try your stuff more often than not. Unless you have some crazy stuff that I know is on the label. You're going to be like, all right, this is a 10 year plus MGP. Yeah. Or, I'll try a $100 LE. Yeah. 100 plus LE. Yeah. I'm in on that. Yeah. If this is one of your normal SKUs, I would love for it to be. Especially if it's around five, I love for it to not be a hundred dollars. Well, affordable, if possible. Portability. Yeah. All right. Next, we got <sighs> dark arts. If you know anything about how much you loved Wilderness Trail, mm -hmm. single barrel, because you probably did, because you probably had some freaking awesome ones. Yeah. I mean, then, we did what five? Five barrels through Wilderness? Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Always a fun time. Mostly I because of the person five. that was uh, curating for us. So McCoy. Fantastic single barrel program manager. Yes. Went off, started uh, his own venture mm -hmm. called Dark Arts Whiskey House. Love the name, by the way. I love the, I love the connotation of Whiskey House. Yeah. I love that. And I love that it's different, and I love it a lot. And he's like the lead alchemist or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Head alchemist or something Head, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fun stuff. These are all extreme, hyper unique. Oh, extremely unique. Yeah. Like this one's six and a half years old. Very transparent. Six and a half years old. Proof and all this stuff on the size, bottles, batch numbers, all of it. Straight bourbon whiskey finished with toasted Jupilees, Fleur, French oak staves. <laughs> and you know that it's fun if you can't even pronounce the word. Um, yeah. Uh, transparency. Great. We, we, I room. mean, we, we always sing praises when companies do that. I just as I class. just said, I want to know what I'm drinking. Um, they, they have different, different SKUs out there right now. We have three in the castle. I think we've opened two. Been pleasant, pleasantly surprised with both of them so One far. One of them is finished rye. Yeah. Or rye finished Amarana with Amarana. I love it. Um, but these, uh, he's in, I believe he's in Lexington. I don't know if you can visit, but if no. you can visit, it's worth looking up, yeah. is what I would say. Um, very, very cool. Actually, I love that bottle shape a lot. The squatty round yeah. bottle. And it really shape. fits the, the label, the, like the whole the vibe, vibe yeah. of the label, the packaging really yeah. uh, goes along with it. See, that's really good. Yeah. Like it's, you can go do picks there too. Um, I had talked to McCauley about us like doing a pick, some form of a pick or something. I believe almost all of them are some form of finished or staved or yeah. something like that. They're doing Super interesting, stuff. truly. Yeah. Um, Justin's House of Bourbon has like a nine and a half year pick from him already. So he, like, I do believe there's some damn good stocks over there. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's worth watching, for sure. For sure. What is this one? Okay, this is an up and coming brand just because I've had one bottle from them and I fell in love with it and Sean yeah. liked it too. And now we think it's like dusty whiskey and it just came out though. Not a plug, but uh, check out Blind Barrels. This is where we found this actually. Yeah, uh, and then Dan goes, I must own a bottle. Yeah, I got a hold of Bobby Reach over there. Bobby and uh, now owns a bottle. Yeah, there's one here. Yeah, um, this is this one. ILR. Somebody posted a picture in our Discord the other day that they found these in like a store shelf. It wasn't this label, but it was the ILR company. Yeah. It is Iowa Legendary Rye. This is the gold label. This apparently comes out, I think, in March of 24. So very soon here. But this is a supposedly historically accurate recipe from like the 30s, I think. Yeah, why don't you read that recipe? This is a rye. It's 103 mm -hmm. proof. Sean and I couldn't figure this out in the video. Not at all. We, If you would have said you will either die or figure out even remotely what this is, we would have both be dead right dead. now. Very dead. Um, this, <laughs> the, the cool thing is this is batch number two. They put on the front spirits distilled from rye grain and cane, cane sugar. So it says ingredients, organic rye, cane sugar, purified water, yeast. Those are the only ingredients. Sugar in there. It genuinely tastes like dusty. Yeah, it's wild. Dusty bourbon or dusty whiskey, whatever you're, but 
it's like the most off the wall thing I think Sean and I have probably had in a really long time that was a brand new release. 100%. Like Waves. It, it was a label we've never even heard of. Yeah, um, never Yeah, never heard yeah. of the brand, never heard of the distillery, the company. I haven't, I, neither of us have had their other offerings. I would yeah. definitely try them because of the uniqueness and how inc incredibly cool this release is or was. So, so if I see another thing from this brand in the store, I would definitely pick one up. I would personally, I'm not telling you to. But if you see this gold label, you have to try this. You yeah. have to try the gold label. Especially if you see it at a bar. You have Definitely to. Definitely check that out. It's wild. My next one. Oh, oh you thought I dropped it. I wasn't sure, honestly. You thought I dropped it. I would never. It was low. Uh, we got a little low. Middle West Spirits. I think this is it one of their It comes in alleys. a tube. Yeah. Um, that came in a tube. But it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, so this is corn, wheat, rye, and barley. Four grain. Bourbon whiskey aged in Spanish, Solera, Sherry, Cat. It's so good. Six years. Fantastic. It's so um, good. Middle West is putting out some really, really cool stuff. Yes. We have another bottle over there that we're going to do a review on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is one that just kind of came out of nowhere for us. Middle West? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, bought somebody else's product that was a rye. Some of the sources from MGP put out a rye recently. Mm -hmm. Bought it because on the back it said Ohio. We're like, what the hell's Ohio, Ohio rye? Yeah. Come to find out it was Middle, Middle West, West sourced and it's fantastic. Um, Middle West does barrel picks, wholesaling. They do their own stuff. So like, it's kind of cool because their stuff will be like leaking on the market in many different yeah. forms at this point. This is a fantastic release. It's finished really well. The rye is absolutely fantastic just by itself. Yeah. So that, that, I mean, that was like Dan said, our discovery of Middle West. Yeah. And then since then we've gone down several different avenues with them. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah. And they're making it and it's, it's really cool. This is a brand that I would expect to be successful over the next handful of years. Yeah. And like be like a bigger name and everybody's like a more household name and whatnot. They're very cool. Honestly, cool distillery though. I love that I, we, I, like I discussed at Pours, um, they had somebody there, discussed doing a pick with them. Uh, yeah. And he brought us a pick that was, that somebody had already picked and it was fantastic. It was like five years old and good at Cast Right. So. And drink it all. I didn't even try it. All right. We get left. This is a, we each have one, right? Yes. This is a brand that you guys probably already know about, but if you don't, yes. you should try to find some picks of theirs. Rare Character. Uh, another brand we've also done several picks with. Yeah. Um, we, we got the Four. Meat Pablo this yeah. last year. Yep. Uh, fantastic guy. He's got some crazy cool whiskey. Several picks I've had, I've just absolutely loved. Dara's most recently. Uh huh. Did I almost drink the most of the bottle? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. In like three weeks. Was in Sean's basement the Two other weeks. day and I walked down there and saw an almost empty rare turkey. I'm like, what is that? And it was Dara's pick. Yeah, it was like every time I was working, it was right there. Sure. I, you know, I the weird part is there. there's about 40 other ones that are right there. Yeah, they're all. And right. Sean was murdering that bottle. <laughs> no, bottle. for real, a lot of the, he, a lot of interesting sourcing out of yeah. rare character. Mainly, I think, fully sourcing. I think an NDP would be the correct uh, thing. Yeah. But uh, the correct terminology mostly MGP and then a bunch of other random stuff now that's very good. We've got single called like the Ex Exceptional Series. Yeah. Uh, we've got one coming out Some really are super wild. soon. Um, and it's just crazy cool stuff. Yeah, very American single malt, but very old, which yeah. is uh, unique to the Double industry. Digits. And then a lot of off the wall MGP stuff. Uh, and a lot of like, we did two cognac finish ones. Yep. One tastes like almost like a peated scotch. Yeah, one that was, is very sweet. I love that sweet one too. Yeah, but like just unique profile of whiskeys mm -hmm. from a distillery you already know and love basically. Yeah, it's, it's so. just a different take on MGP, yeah. which is fantastic. And just MGP. doing different stuff, yeah. aging it differently or finishing it differently or whatever. So getting a cool take these are on cool. something different. Yeah, it's these great. are good. A lot of these are pretty damn good, so. Last and certainly not least. Segwaying into how people are managing MGP differently and making it unique to themselves. Fair okay. Literally, probably, um, honestly, I do truly believe the most unique MGP on the market yeah. is currently coming out of barrel. Um, a lot of different blending um, yes. and rebarreling, doing like putting stuff together that we would never think to put together yep. and making it work. Jared um, truly is a mad scientist in the best way I could say that of blending. Um, and they might have just got a new blender. New head blender, master blender, I believe his title is. I mean, he is a uh, world's top whiskey taster. Yeah. Uh, I'm final boss of Matt Madness. Yeah. Um, uh, Bar some, I mean, some would even say that Bardstown allowed him. A 2X blend again champion. Yeah. 
Matt Porter. Yeah. Matthew Porter himself, uh, ADHD whiskey. Is now the master blender for Barrel yeah. Kings. This is truly the most unique ways. He's using a lot of legacy barrels. He's like using a lot of like stag barrels or willet barrels or mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different barrels they're using at Barrel King and they're taking pretty good aged MGP, yeah. finishing it in those things and then blending it on top of that. Yep. Makes for extremely unique um, products. If you've had Whiskey King 3 from Porter, Whiskey King 3 from, or ADHD whiskey, if you've had the Whiskey King 3 blend, it's mind blowing that that is not extremely, extremely old, possibly legacy whiskey. Yeah. So that's, that's come to find out good at what he does. It's so good. Um, the, every brand that we, this Barrel King is going to be successful without a 100%, doubt. Yeah. They are trending or heading or whatever in the right direction. It's not even remotely close. The more people that find out about them, I think the more people that will be falling in love with them over the next year or two. So yeah, um, honestly, the, We've already said it, the way he does things is kind of a, a, a big lesson that we learned from Jared. So yeah. glad he's, we got that experience man. because uh, he taught us way too much stuff for free. I do think that Jared truly will have changed the, I, I think that as soon as people like figure this out and get attached to it, I think yep. that people will figure out that double barreling from used barrels is actually incredible. Everybody was scared to do it and everybody shied away from it because yeah. it's not like this isn't straight bourbon anymore, yeah. whatever the classification needs to be. Mm -hmm. I know that goes away with some of it. I do think that it's the, I actually think that it makes for significantly better whiskey often when treated correctly, so. It's the same thing as rare character. You're putting yes. a different spin on the same old thing, which is fantastic. Uh -huh. You find your own lane and you can do it very well, become very successful at it. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. But hey, that's our list. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think we missed or, you know, if you didn't hear something that you wanted us to talk about, let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't ever say that though. Seriously. I wish I could. Yeah.